Hello YouTube, welcome to another SY Diagnostics video and today we've got a 2009 Ford Galaxy that's a non-stark situation and it's stuck in park. So what we've done, uh, I've, I've spoken to the customer and there's no previous history with this vehicle it's never played up before, it's been pretty much faultless. It just happened the other night. Uh, he called roadside assistance out to it. They've had a quick look at it. Um, they managed to communicate with it at the time. Pulled out quite a few fault codes. Um, unfortunately, as you can see in the next bit, we can't communicate with it with the systems we've got. And we've got the snap-on machine, we've got launch, we've got Ford tool. I use Forescan as well. So just to confirm the issue, <coughs> straight away engine malfunction and sometimes when I turn the ignition on you can briefly sometimes quickly see transmission malfunction because this is an, uh, an automatic and it is stuck in park as well but that's that's not an issue uh, it also comes up sometimes saying immobilizer malfunction briefly you might have just seen it there anyway foot on the brake I'm cranking it now and I've got absolutely nothing so what I'll do I'll just show you now that I can't communicate with the vehicle and um, so we're going to start from basics, sit down and have a think about which way we're going to go. Um, yeah, and take it from there basically. So what I'll do next, I'll plug the diagnostic machine in just to show you that. And then I, what I'll do, I'll plug the uh, canvas breakout box in there. And let's see what we've got and let's take this in a particular direction. Okay, so we've got no communication with the diagnostic machine. Um, plugged in the breakout box. We can see, let's pop the ignition on. There we go. So we've got uh, communication on one and eight, on three and 11, and six and 14. We've got a ground on four and five, and a permanent live on 16. This is all straight to the diagnostic socket itself. So as far as the vehicle's concerned, we've got some communication can wise uh, but as the diagnostic machine won't talk to the vehicle I'm gonna head towards the checking all the PCM out because as far as I'm aware I may be wrong here but IDS communicates initially via the PCM to get all the vehicle details and then goes from there so I'm just gonna go and uh, look at some wiring diagrams now and take the job further okay so we've got no communication with the engine control unit uh, doesn't seem to have any power uh, outputs at all or anything like that just a quick check here if it goes lightly into the front of these uh, sensors and as you can see I don't have any 5 volt feed at all at that particular sensor and no doubt the same here so my hands just blocking the multimeter there so just lightly go on the front I'm not actually going down the pins just touching the front of them and as you can see, I've got nothing there. So I've got no five volt reference feeds to any of the sensors. Um, also, let me just move the uh, camera. If I was to test the air mass meter as well, which is a 12 volt feed directly off one of the fuses, um, it's dead as well. So we're looking at um, possibly now an ECU failure or an ECU supply or ground issue, or possibly even CAN bus. So we need to take this diagnosis further again.
Okay, so we looked at the wiring diagram and this is your main relay, which when energized, powers up fuse here. So the ignition is on, this, this isn't being energized. So it powers this fuse, as you can see, we've got nothing on it. This is a main, sorry, this is a powered feed from the relay. This fuse here is a permanent feed to the engine control unit. And then we've got various fuses here, here and here, which power turbo solenoid and air mass meter as well. So we've got no, nothing coming out of this relay at all. So I'm just gonna turn the video off now. We're gonna bypass this relay and make sure we've got internal circuitry on this fuse board. Right, so we've briefly now just bypassed the relay with a piece of wire, just a jumper wire. And we've now got our feeds on the particular fuses that we didn't have feed on before. Also whilst I'm here I can see that I've got an ignition feed to the relay. Let me just take the jumper out and we've got its permanent feed. That will be its output so this will be a ground supplied according to the wiring diagram off the PCM. Okay, so the, by the power of um, TV, YouTube, whatever you want to call it, I took the uh, arch liner out, the wheel off, and the ECU lives in here. Looked on the wiring diagram. I've just bypassed the relay once more, so this should be now getting power. Three power feeds direct off the relay. So we've got a power feed there, as you can see, it's lit up. And then if I just move it, down one, well, it's just looking at my little map there and we've got a power feed there as well as you can see and then move it in one I've got a power feed there as well so there are three power feeds direct from the relay we've got six grounds and we've also got a permanent live off fuse 10 the battery junction box we need to test so what i'll do now i'll just connect into the grounds and show you them now actually i'll do the uh, live feed first um the permanent live then we'll test the grounds there's also can bus as well to test okay so as if by magic we're now connected to the permanent live of the middle plug uh, this is off fuse 10 in the battery junction box and it's completely dead which is interesting so what I need to do now go back um, check for continuity maybe do a load test on the wire itself um, what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna bypass this if this is the case if it is a broken wire or high resistance bypass it and let's see if we can get a uh, communication and hopefully a start on the vehicle in which case then we don't need to test the grounds and we don't need to test the CAN bus. Okay, so we're now doing a quick continuity test from this particular pin, connected up to the multimeter, to the supply from the fuse itself. And as you can see there, we've got 18 kilo ohms of resistance. So obviously somewhere between the fuse box and the multi-plug connector we've got some high resistance and quite a bit of a volt drop so what I'm going to do now is just bypass that wire straight to the battery give it a permanent feed plug her in and let's see if we've got communication and hopefully the vehicle will start up 
So we've identified now that we're missing a permanent power feed to the PCM. So what I've done, I've identified the power feed wire, yellow and red. I back probe into it by taking the connector cover off and I'm just basically connected it straight up to the battery now. Let me just show you what we've done. So we've just gone straight onto the battery positive, thus giving it a permanent feed. And let's see if it starts up. Okay, so we're back inside the car now. The dashboard is going crazy because um, I'm not in park. Let's pop the ignition on. That's quite a good sign to start with. It doesn't say engine malfunction. Foot on the brake and straight away it starts up. So that's good in, for me. I reckon that's a fix. What I need to do now is find exactly where this wire is corroded or broken.